a new exciting open source blockchain platform has been born. Its core mission is to develop easier and more affordable tools for everyone to be able to create tokens and NFTs. For the first time, we're introducing the innovative Tokel platform, a fully decentralized community-driven project with contributors globally. It offers many new powerful features for artists, content creators, and event organizers, and token owners. Tokel is building the future of tokenization together with the help of Komodo Technologies. Creators and users have the freedom to create, to hold, buy, sell, and trade tokens with ease. Developers have the freedom to build on top of the platform's layer. Tokel has features such as simplified token creation tools, token decks, and NFT marketplace. The NFT creation process has an extremely low barrier to entry. Businesses and individuals can now benefit from the token economy by using tokens in everyday life. A built-in decentralized exchange enables peer-to-peer -peer trading. Tokel.io, the future of tokenization to NFT and beyond. Greetings, I'm Giuliano. Welcome to Tokel Talk. It's Tuesday. April 19, 2022. And in today's episode, we'll be talking about all things NFT. Joining us today are Hayden from Proton Planets. We have Titan6 from Space Cadets NFT and Avi from Rex Credit NFT. We'll also be doing an NFT giveaway. So watch out for the form that will get posted in the Tokel Events chat channel during the stream. If you'd like to be a future guest on the show, visit our website tokel.io slash tokeltalk. Scroll down and fill in the form to join Tokel Talk as a guest. And before we meet our guests, here's Kelsey with some NFT stats. Hi, Kelsey. Hey, everyone, and thanks for joining the Tokel Talk. Uh, so this week, in the last seven days, there's been over $483 million in sales, with over 228,000 NFTs being sold. This week's total market cap for the global NFT industry is sitting at around $10.2 billion, as reported by CoinMarketCap. The top NFT collections by trading volume this week are Moonbirds on Ethereum, Mutant Ape Club on Ethereum, Win NFT Horse on Binance, Bored Ape Yacht Club on Ethereum, and CryptoPunks on Ethereum. We are still seeing NFTs selling for incredible prices. Two items from the SOT finger at Metaverse sold for a, an astonishing $5.8 million each. A CryptoPunk was sold for $3.2 million each. An NFT from the Black History Month 2022 Salute Collection sold for $1 million. And a Rev Racing NFT sold for $1.02 million. Also in NFT news, we saw the launch of the Moonbirds NFT, which clocked an amazing $200 million in sales. This project is the first tied to Kevin Rose's Proof Collective, which is a community of NFT collect collectors whose membership pass costs at least 99 Ethereum per membership. This week, we also saw major gaming labels showing an increased interest in NFTs and gaming. Activision Blizzard, the gaming giant, sent out a survey to its users gauging players' interest in cryptocurrency and NFT products. And Yosuke Matsuda, the president of the gaming giant Square Enix, who is responsible for the Final Fantasy series, insists that the future of gaming features blockchain technology and NFTs, despite questions and pushback from the Final Fantasy fan base. And that's the news for this week. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Now on with the show. Let's start with Hayden from Proton Planets. Hayden, what do you think about the NFT industry and what has your journey been like so far? Fascinating how it changed and developed so quickly as I grew up. Look at the gaming industry alone. In two to three decades, we've gone from black and white devices such as the Tamagotchi or Game Boy to consoles just getting better and better. Now we've got mobile phones and computers with touchscreen capabilities and a whole array of utilities and functionality. Now we're at a point where we have blockchain games being developed, Web3, the metaverse, and cryptocurrency and NFT projects with actual use case and utility. 
I was already interested in cryptocurrency before entering in the NFT space, but you know, don't get me wrong, I was skeptical about it too. Um, but as you learn more and understand how powerful and revolutionary NFTs are, it's a place which is just fantastic. Amazing. So it sounds like you've had a bit of a of a journey. You've been around for for how long? Uh, when we were talking first, uh, when we were introducing ourselves, you had mentioned you've been around for a number of years uh, and uh, got in maybe through through some people that you know. And uh, what was that like? So I probably got into the crypto space at the start of twenty twenty one, but I wasn't eighteen, so I couldn't invest any capital into projects which I saw as you know really good. Thankfully, that wasn't the case because we had that uh, major May crash with the uh, China banning, the Elon FUD. But come June and July, I started buying into sort of some altcoins. And come August, I found about Proton, which now we've launched our NFT collection on, which is a fantastic decentralized payment blockchain. Mm, I see. So, okay, this is great. Like, it's nice to have you on and you're relatively young, but at the same time, you're very motivated. So it's great to have you here to, to hear more about what's going on for you. We also have from Space Cadets, Titan 6. So Titan 6, why don't you tell us about when you got interested in, in NFTs and what inspired you to get involved with Space Cadets? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So my journey into crypto was kind of funny. I grew up farming strawberries uh, with my family on the central coast of California. And uh, I remember my friend just kept bugging me like, hey, you know, get into this, get into this. And I was super skeptical. Um, and I purchased Bitcoin, uh, at 7k and I was like, you know, I was really hoping it would work out. And sure enough, I think, uh, last time I checked Bitcoin is a smidge up from 7k. So really, I just stayed really on projects, looking at different things. And I was really impressed with NFTs and I just, I loved it. I fell in love. And so I started getting into NFTs and I really just enjoyed every yeah every part of it. I'm very glad to have you here. And we look forward to learning a bit more about Space Cadets. And we also have with us Avi from Rex Credit NFT. So yeah, Avi, tell us about your background and how you got into renewable energy credits. Absolutely. So I actually come from the tech startup space. And having founded my own startup and working for another number of other startups, I did not like the... Uh, antiquated VC model of raising capital. Uh, you have to jump through all these hoops. They ha they, a lot of times, they don't need old guys don't even understand the technology. So you're really trying to sell them something that they don't understand or care about. Um, I do have a background in renewable energy. And um, I said I was actively trading crypto since 2017. And when NFTs came around, I figured that would be a great way to uh, tokenize renewable energy credits. And I uh, would provide, would not only improve the renewable energy industry, but provide more transparency and integrity and prevent double counting in, when it comes to renewable energy credits. That's incredible. It's always nice to have a diverse set of backgrounds and, and experiences and skill sets. And so you definitely bring that to the show today. Thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. We can talk a little bit about youth to begin with. How do you see youth involved in the NFT space? And we'll start with Hayden. Maybe you can kick us off with that. What are your thoughts on youth and the next generation in crypto and NFTs? You were very passionate about it when we first talked, and I'm curious uh, if everybody else can can hear those same ideas. Yeah, so personally, I got into NFTs because I believe a lot of young people need to pioneer this space, and I want to be a part of it. If you look at past successes within technology that have faced backlash or were ridiculed at first, and you're looking at some of the most successful pieces of technology to this day, the internet, computers, mobile phones. And I do think with the right people, projects and ideas, young people will help NFTs be up there. And it's only a matter of time. What do you guys think? I think uh, in line with that, like Rex kind of hit the nail on the head there, where the old model of doing things is is slowly changing. And it's going to take you know people like the people in this chat to, to actually get that change occurring and do things differently and put new ideas out there and put new projects out there. So the younger generations understand this technology and understand how they can use it differently, I think a lot easier than the older generation can. And so it'll be interesting to see where it goes. I agree. I think with new technology, blockchain technology isn't going away. Uh, we're seeing it starting to be taught in universities. So it's only a matter of time before we're teaching it to children. Interesting. 
you know, the other thing that comes out of this, uh, as well as from Rex to NFT, uh, from Avi saying that, you know, he's looking for a new way, a new model of doing things. And a lot of these NFT projects are community oriented. So I'm wondering maybe Titan 6, how do you see the importance of community with all of this NFT space? Yeah, sure. I mean, community is everything, right? Our community has been such absolute pleasure working with and growing with. And uh, community is with all projects, the most important part. And, you know, spending time in the discords, getting to know everybody. It's really been probably my favorite part of the project. There's lifelong friends and it's just been a pleasure. And I think it's really important that the community has a voice too. So one of the things that we brought forward is a community board called the Isotope Council. So what they do is they pretty much vote on decisions that we make as representatives of the community. And we found that to be really interesting to see, like, what directions they think we should go and really just kind of speak for the community. They engage in the chat to say, hey, what do you guys think? So really, the project is extraordinarily community driven, all the way down to the decisions, the logo, I mean, everything. And we thought moving forward, that was a really important aspect of our project. That's fascinating. I definitely agree with you there, Titan, in the sense of you see, you know, big corporations these days that don't take into consideration, you know, what the community wants, what they want in their games, what they want in their products. And it's great how NFTs and the crypto community have these pockets where they all get involved and they all share ideas and they all really want to support everyone and take everyone's information into account. Yeah, absolutely. I think what you explained is almost like a DAO in sorts. It's, uh, you know, a group of people working together in a semi-centralized fashion, but taking direct feedback from their community. And I think a DAO is just like the official structure that one would put on it. But whether you need that or not is is up to, you know, the project and whether that makes sense for the project and the community. Indeed. And, you know, it really does go along with what Avi was saying about just changing the the way we do things and get things done. And a lot of it has to involve community because the involvement and the the sense of ownership that that comes within the NFT space, I find you own a part of the community. You are you, and so you take it seriously in that sense as well. Uh, I do want to move towards also these energy credits, Avi. Uh, we're some of us might be curious. So, what are renewable energy credits, and how are you using NFTs to fund them? Like you mentioned, and what sort of response have you been getting so far? Absolutely. So, renewable energy credits or renewable energy certificates, as they're sometimes called, is just a way to represent your uh, and show your investment in green energy. So, when you buy a renewable energy credit, you are directly funding the generation of uh, renewable energy that we used in our electric grid. So generally speaking, one REC or REC renewable energy credit represents 1,000 kilowatt hours of uh, renewable energy, and what they've been used for in the past was a way to sort of offset carbon emissions from large corporations or multinationals from their um, production lines or factories. And they were, it was mandated by the government they had to buy a certain amount of real, renewable energy credits uh, each year. Um, so what we're doing is essentially opening the first consumer market for this uh, with, a, with low barriers to entry. And at the same time, we believe that by tokenizing renewable energy credits, we're going to... Um, improve them because there's been a lot of fraud and double counting issues in that in the renewable energy credit industry. Um, and we are partnered with TerraPass, which is the largest renewable energy credit and vendor in the world. So every time you buy a Rex NFT, you do receive a PCL or product content label that can be verified on the TerraPass website. And the response has been great. A lot of people have been looking to this for this sort of shift uh, for a long time because it brings more tr- integrity, transparency, to the renewable energy credit industry, as well as improve the way in which they're used and add more utility. The more we we get examples of creativity for this technology that brings us NFTs and tokens, I think it's always exciting to get examples of people like yourself who are actively advancing the use of these technologies. So good for you. And it's really exciting to hear. I guess we've covered a few ideas here. You know, We've covered a bit about youth and a bit about community. And a bit about like just changing the way that we do things. When you so far, when you look at at the NFT space, what are what are you seeing? Are these the trends that you're seeing? 
And, and are we missing anything? Is there anything from the picture that we're missing so far? Yeah, one trend I definitely think we've already seen already. You know, not only have we seen this community, but I do think, I think Kelsey pointed out earlier in the um, facts at the beginning, a lot more bigger brands are also getting into these NFTs. We've seen the likes of clothing companies like Adidas, Nike, food companies like McDonald's and Heineken, all wanting to get in to NFTs because they understand the power and the possibilities with them. And I do think this is going to uh, continue. Plenty of areas where we can improve on in this uh, technology space. And it's only a matter of time before you know, smart people come along and, and start to you know, focus their efforts and attention in the space and then you know, either bridge the gap between whatever they're currently doing and using blockchain technology or tokens or you know, coming up with brand new use cases for them. I think we'll, uh, we'll continue to see changes consistently over time and the amount of growth in this industry, specifically when it comes to using NFTs, is, is huge because people are starting to really understand how they can use them and, and how they can bring significant amounts of value to their, their businesses as well as their communities. I've seen the NFT buyer uh, from a year ago get more and more sophisticated as time goes on and bringing up community and the sense of community, I think that gives... That's bringing rise to the um, creation of utility NFTs. I think the days of just JPEGs that have no function or utility or uses um, is sort of a dying trend. Obviously, they're still very popular projects, but they were usually early to the game. I think more and more NFTs projects being created are going to provide a utility or use case that is a way to sort of give back to their community. And uh, like I said, the buyers of NFTs are only getting more sophisticated as time goes on. I think as the use cases expand, then there will be a whole new group of buyers, you know, because we're seeing real world use cases come into play. We're seeing metaverse NFTs. Uh, we're seeing art NFTs. I mean, there's all sorts of use cases that are coming out. To go back to our original point on that note is the younger generation are going to see these deficiencies in offerings or at least see these opportunities to and build upon those opportunities and do do the things that other people aren't doing. Very interesting. And yeah, I do think those those young people might bring those ideas to the older generation who might not see it yet. You know, these CEOs, these executives to, you know, higher up companies who have been doing something for so long may get, you know, an idea given to them by a younger person within their team. And they actually think, you know what, why don't we give this a go? And it helps, you know, spread that growth of NFTs and the technology that it brings. And maybe just to round it out a little bit more is to come back to the idea of community and the idea of, of crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing the creativities and, and the ideas and the wisdom of the, of the crowd in some sense in order to have a participation in bringing about these um, use cases, products and, and other things that are, are being developed using these technologies. Now, one thing actually that I found interesting, for example, Hayden, from Proton Planets, you are connecting your NFTs, the NFTs on the Proton chain, with a physical card. And that physical card has a QR code on it. Do you want to describe this a little bit more and tell us what this is about? Yeah, of course. Once again, one thing that we've touched on is owner benefits and utility. And um, one thing that we want to do is bridge the gap between digital collectors and physical collectors we've seen you know pokemon cards we've seen match attacks we've seen all these sorts of collectible cards and what's stopping tying nfts to these physical cards helping new people get into nfts and we've done this by creating a physical edition and shipping that out to owners who purchase our nfts um, they have a qr code on them allowing immediate authentication to the blockchain. And um, it's just another way that we like to give back to the people who uh, support us and our future growth. This is very interesting. And you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're doing all of the work yourself or do you have a team that you're working with? How is that going for you? I mean, you're, you said you're 19 years old. I imagine uh, that you're taking this on as partly from just being curious and motivated and seeing an opportunity. So how, yeah, what's that like for you? Yeah, currently at the moment, um, I've got plans to go to university. I'm working full time, uh, studying. I've, I've got a busy life, but so, don't, don't most of us. 
and um you know i just saw nfts and one thing that inspired me was my sister so um we work closely together which is great because uh, they always say that the best team is actually in your family and um she's a fantastic artist and i've always said to her like you need to get your art like out and about you need to you know spread this with people but you know it's so hard to these days you've got fantastic artists everywhere um so we work together and you know she's coming up with fantastic concepts fantastic ideas and fantastic drawings and um then the idea just kept on spinning and spinning and spinning and then before we knew it we were starting to develop an actual project very nice and so then you and then you bring in these physical cards um we learned a word called digital on the podcast recently and that's bridging that digital and, and physical item um so this is a nice example of of that and uh, you know also rex rex nft you're also doing something similar um hold on a second maybe nutella you want to jump in there for a second this physical card is an interesting thing because you know the digital uh token can be transferred to whoever whenever without needing to to move anything physically but then when you add this element of a physical card you know whether you, whether the on sale of the physical physical card occurs or not is kind of beside the point but i think the way that it's being used in this instance is the first owner gets the physical card or at least you can redeem the physical card and i really like this concept because it gives that initial owner uh more value than you know the the owners in the secondary market which might be an interesting uh, incentive structure for people to use nice always thinking about those incentive structures i like it and so here's another incentive structure, Rex NFT. You are um, planting trees for people who buy the energy credit. Is that right? Yeah, we partnered with a um, a charity or a nonprofit in a in uh, the Washington D.C. and East Coast area to uh, plant trees. Um, so for if that, just for the first thousand run, you know, for this first series, so a thousand trees will be planted. Um, but as far as um, what you receive when you buy uh, Rex NFT, you also, like I said, that product content label, which is a serial number, which so you do actually have ownership of a Rex credit, our renewable energy credit, which in and itself is also a tradable commodity in addition to the NFT. That's incredible. So I, th- I guess there are just a lot of ways that that what you're doing, I mean, you're, you're just advancing the, the space and yeah, like wh- where, where do you find your creativity comes from around all of this? You mean like as an inspiration? Yeah, exactly. I would say so. Well, we recently partnered with a um, with a, a project called ClimaDAO, and their uh, their tokens are carbon work as carbon offsets. And uh, I think we get a, we feed off each other. Uh, we always do. We have these weekly brainstorming sessions. Me and the founders of that project. And I think uh, having you know regularly dis- having brainstorm sessions, discussions, or regular um, meetups with others other like-minded people or people in this space is a great idea. And that's where I think I get a lot of uh, creative ideas. And, uh, you know, speaking of as well, you know, I, I noticed with, with the space cadets, you seem to have a very tight knit team and also com- tight knit community as well. And I'm, I'm just curious, you know, Titan six, you had mentioned to me that once you get involved with something, you get super hyper focused. So what is it about space cadets that really draws you in? Is it the is it the the, the, the space theme? Is it like what 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 is it that you're noticing for you that that really uh, jumps out for you about space cadets when when you're so focused into it? You know, I think initially it was it was funny. Um so I didn't go onto the team initially as a team member. I went in as an investor. And so every Saturday our artists would hold live streams. Uh, where she would actually do one of ones that the community would help design. I attended one of those, and it blew me away. It was the first time I'd seen a one of one drawn on the spot, especially that's community driven. You could say like gecko hanging from a nose ring that's on one of the uh, one of ones, and it just blew me away. And so, right. So just to just to clarify, sorry, just if we understand you correctly, so that was the community is helping the artist in real time to to develop the one of one. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. It's very every cool. Saturday, 
And so sometimes it would take multiple Saturdays to complete a one of one. And what was cool is to kind of see the development, like one of a particular vision or a particular sense of humor or whatnot. And then with if it took three Saturdays, each Saturday it would take on a completely different kind of vibe in a sense. Uh, so that was kind of the big sales point for me was just how open the team was to collaborate with the community and to build on that. And so then, you know, I set a meeting with the founder and the team and, you know, the rest is history there. But it was, and it was also the, the artwork in itself. The artist went crazy. She did 350 traits, uh, all hand-drawn. And it was amazing to watch her do some of those live. And so it was that, and then just the community, right? Just the, the people who really make Space Cadets what it is, is what's kept me excited all this time. Very nice. Kept you excited and kept you involved, got you involved, I, I guess would be the, the ultimate result, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Cool. And um, I had noticed maybe, Hayden, did you want to ask a question or, or make a comment? Yeah, I was about to say, um, Titan, how did you balance that? Because obviously with different Saturdays, I don't know how many people turned up again and again, but did, how did you balance like the conflicting ideas? I'm sure you must have had, you know, some people do it wanting this, some people wanting that. How did you, how did you manage that? So you're talking about conflicting ideas within the community? Yeah, exactly. So, you know what was funny? That never happened. I think, you know, there was such a level of respect in the live streams that if someone said like, hey, I wanted a, a, gold, a gold face and, you know, someone, they, they wouldn't really argue. It would just be like, hey, the gold face sounds good to me. And so I think it wasn't really like, I think it should be this, not this. It was, I think it should be this. Oh, that's cool. How about we add this? There was never an issue. And uh, I'm glad it wasn't. I didn't even really think about it. But it was, it was so fun. And I mean, some of the names or the, just the creations are wild. Yeah. So it was, it was just fun. But yeah, really enjoyed it. I guess that's where the, the trust in the creator or the artist comes in, into play and, and how much the community likes to see that artist explore different ideas and concepts and if everybody has their say and the artist is willing to take on those different ideas then it can be a really beautiful thing yeah well and one thing that i think she did very well some of the greatest feedback we got from that period of time was the, how she was able to take the idea and bring it to exactly what their vision was and she would she was really responsive with the community if it was is this what you envisioned no let me tweak it a little bit and so it was really cool to just watch how she could fine tune their idea until it was as if, you know, it came right out of their thoughts. Yeah, that's cool. Especially, you know, pre-launch or at least pre-design, if you're building a community, then that's like an incredible way to engage people and get them to be part of the process as, as that process has captured you and your efforts and your want to join the team and, and make the community and project a better place. And the cool thing is I, there are countless people who have had a say in what our, uh, and at the end of the day, what the one of ones looked like, which I always thought that was really cool. Right on. And then what happens with that one of one once it's created? So then what we'll do is we'll do different prizes or different raffles. Um, so there's actually a, a member who's listening in right now who is a winner of our one of one. And his profile is our, was our last one of one. And so it just goes out to the community free of charge. If we either do a raffle or a giveaway or a challenge, all of those went, yeah, just to the community. And then we're also saving some for our roadmap. So there will be a few goodies road dropped there that I think people are going to be pretty stoked about. Nice. It definitely sounds like you have a, an engaged community and a collaborative community. And that's always heartwarming for me when I get to, to see that. So good job for everyone there at Space Cadets. Hayden, did you want to say something as well there? I was just about to say that's just, once again, I think you summed it up perfectly, but it's a great way to involve your community that how they were almost creating a custom one for themselves between the community and then depending on a raffle or, you know, a certain stage of the process for the project that that would be given out to a member. Right. And I think the key thing is you had to have been involved in the one of one to be eligible. And it really worked out a lot. The person who really gave the most effort or, you know, energy to the one of one. A lot of times it just happened that they were the winners, which was really cool. And so they got to kind of champion 
uh, their own one of one, which I haven't seen anywhere else. Amazing. Well, from what I've seen and heard from you and, and the Space Cadets, it seems like, like I said, you a very collaborative, creative community. And in that, and in that sense, you, you're creating enjoyable things together. And so it looks like you'll be creating even more. So good luck with all of, all of that. And, and uh, it's always exciting to hear from, from other people. I, I hope, for, for example, uh, that each of you are are finding some value in, in hearing the other. And um, this, is, this is always a good reason to have these kinds of discussions. Absolutely. Rex NFT, I'm curious. For, oh, wait, Natalia, like, go ahead first before we, we move on. It's all right. I was going to I was gonna ask uh, Ave from Rex NFT a question, if that's right. Yeah, please do. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested in understanding the interaction uh, that people have with uh, your project specifically when you know, on that initial sale and then what, once they have the, the credit itself, what, are, what do you envision their interaction with your, your project or business is and how, do, how does that work? Right. So a couple things. Um, one, every holder of uh, our Rex NFTs will receive an, a weekly airdrop of uh, 2,500 Rex coins that we're launching uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, there's a way, you know, as, as long as you hold it, it's going to be, uh, you'll receive a weekly token airdrop. We're also going to be uh, creating staking and farms for the NFTs. And we're partnering with a company called NFT Trade for that. And we're just finalizing everything right now. And as far as, you mean, basically, what's you, once you buy a re- renewable energy credit or Rex NFT, are you saying, like, what, what do you do with it, with it from there? Yeah, yeah, I understand the concept that you you purchase it, purchase it for a specific reason, but is there any interaction? Do they do they like give it back at some stage, or how do they then verify the the proof of where that renewable energy credit is coming from and things like that? Oh, right, understood. Right, so when you buy a Rex NFT, you receive a PCL product content label uh, issued by TerraPass, who is our vendor for renewable energy credits. They're one of the largest in the world for that. And you can there go on the website, type in a, uh, the type, verify the, uh, the credit by typing in the PCL from there. They'll show you where, who was, where it was issued. And then, you know, when the, when the kilowatt hours were generated, you can see a whole uh, sort of a breakdown there. Yeah, nice. That's cool. I'm always interested to see how the interaction with businesses and the NFT itself occurs. Because depending on the business, depends on how the, the user or the customer has to interact or you know, in this case, like they don't necessarily have to, but it's good to have that information there and available. Absolutely. Like I said, transparency is key and blockchain is just, you know, really um, making that more available than ever. Yeah, definitely. And if you, you know, if, if a business is offering a service, then they can still use the public blockchain to enable that service or at least open up their market or facilitate um, decentralized peer-to-peer trading or, or whatever it is they want. So I think. Uh, you know, this idea of the business itself has to be de- decentralized is a misnomer. The business can be a centralized business and offer a solution, uh, but facilitate that in a decentralized fashion using public blockchain and then also using NFTs. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, well, have you experienced any challenges? What, if, if so, what are the challenges you've experienced so far with, with your project? Well, yeah, of course, everybody starting any sort of project or company always faces an uphill battle. Um, I would say just getting people to understand what renewable energy credits are, because it's not exactly a mainstream product. And it was for the longest time, it's been a B2B product. It's only, it was only purchased by businesses and large corporations. So really sort of building, getting people aware, even to, many people have never even heard of renewable energy credits or renewable energy certificates. So it's just sort of bringing them to the attention, bringing, you're sort of spreading that awareness. And then from there, explaining how they can get involved and sort of, like I said, creating that consumer market. That's, that's the biggest uh, battle we're facing right now. But, you know, we have, we're collaborating with people and we're working very hard to really build this out. Nice. Well done. Well done. And uh, how, about, how about you, Hayden, from Proton Planet? So any challenges that you faced? Anything notable there? I mean, this was your first time doing all of this. I'm sure uh, there must have been some. Yeah, definitely. Because this was my sort of first time, you know, sort of creating a project and that sort of thing. One big challenge I faced was, and I still am to be fair, is balancing everything. I wish I could work on my project constantly every day, but 
unfortunately, that's not the reality. You know, most of us have day jobs, studying or social lives or families. And um, it's something definitely worth considering before diving straight into a project and creating the idea if you want that successful growth, that longevity. Yeah. Can relate. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead there, Natalia. No, I can't relate. It's a, it's a tough juggle, especially if you're joining it as a, as a hobby in, in the case of like a lot of people, especially in the, the art space where they're trying to dabble their toes into it. But I mean, it's still doable. You can still build artwork based NFT projects as a, as a hobby to understand, you know, how, how to do it, how to build the communities, how to bring value to your NFTs and, and you know, just get in and, and try it out. And I'd implore artists across the board to just give it a crack, see how easy it is to do uh, in some cases, depending on the platform and, uh, and see how you can build, build out a project and potentially turn that into a more uh, steady stream of income, especially if you're a, like a, a full-time artist generally. Definitely. Well, it's that whole um, sort of aspect of further developing that project. You know, those ideas that you've wanted to shed light on or slowly introduce, but find that time so you can get around and, you know, starting to contact those people who are essential for that development and that growth. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, I should say that it's not just the artists that could do that. There's uh, all sorts of roles and and jobs in the industry that you can come and learn more as you're doing your other uh, main main job. So definitely, you know, definitely try to get involved. I think it's the best way to learn too. Is if you're uh, if you if you join it and you're doing it as a hobby, then you're naturally going to learn a bit quicker than you otherwise would. Uh, and hopefully that can give you a whole set of skills and knowledge and understanding of uh, of the industry, and then you can go full steam ahead at some stage. Very nice. Indeed. You know, if you're listening and you're curious and motivated to participate, you have four four great communities to join to join here. And we've got the Proton Planets, we've got the Space Cadets, we've got Rex NFT, and of course the Tokel platform. Just going back to Space Cadets, then um, have you know, apart from well, you don't you don't seem to have any challenges when it comes to creating those one of ones with community collaboration. Have you noticed any any challenges of significance so far in your time uh, uh, involved with with Space Cadets? Yeah, of course. I mean, with every project, there's going to be hiccups, right? I think for me, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we face is really just kind of seeing through the fog um, and making certain choices, either with marketing or other basic issues that would come up. It's just like, what is the right choice at the right time? what level of resources should be allocated where i mean just those decisions right because they all have impacts and then if, you know we're a multi-international team uh so you know just kind of the basic time zone stuff it's but all in all i'm happy with uh where we are and where the project is and what we've overcome excellent thank you very much you know uh all of these these projects involve moving parts and and sometimes that involves people. Sometimes it involves, for example, Rex NFT. You're dealing with with this, this business environment, and so there's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong and things to consider. But yeah, you know, it's always nice to hear specific stories and, and, and examples from from people who are actually involved. And we all benefit from that. And so we're we're going to be, you know, we're we're coming around towards the end of the show, but we do still have some time left. If there's any topics you guys wanted to cover that haven't been yet, please definitely do interject. Um, but I, I do have one question. I'm curious, you know, we've got Proton Planets you're using, Proton Chain, Space Cadets, Rex NFT, and now we have also your Toko platform. I'm curious what you guys think so far based on what you're doing. Does does the chain matter? Does the does the, does the platform matter? Are you are you chain is it, are you chain agnostic? And um, I guess the the other question around that would be like what what ma- what matters in a chain or platform for you when you're considering these NFT projects? Less of an environmental impact for us, given that we are in the green energy space. So we're on the Polygon network, which is obviously you know Ethereum layer two, but we um you know there there's much less of a carbon footprint there uh, when it comes to the minting process. Yeah, so we're on Proton, which is completely gas-free. So unlike Solana, Polygon, Ethereum, um, that instantly grabbed my attention. 
Moreover, there's we have um, universal name addresses. So unlike um, putting that long Binance address of letters and numbers that look similar to what you find on the back of a gift card, you can forget about that because uh, you can just send it to, for instance, at Nutella Liquor. And there you go. If that's his address, then you've just sent him Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever, whatever you choose. Okay, so it sounds like for you, it, it's about uh, cheaper, like no gas fees, and also ease of use for the for the users. Yeah, well, not only the ease of use, but the community in Proton is still a very small community, unlike Ethereum and stuff like that. So everyone is immersed in each other's projects. That we have um, almost weekly sort of Twitter spaces where three or four. The projects will come together and they'll discuss to an audience what their future is their project and um, what their project's about, allowing more people to understand newer projects within Proton. So it's a really cool, small community, well, compared to Ethereum and uh, Polygon. So, um, yeah, we love that as well. Nice. How about you, Titan 6? I, I think for us, uh, we selected Ethereum, though we are going to be doing... Uh, daily uh, redistribution of sales volume uh so kind of like a give back every day and so that's going to be on polygon but ultimately we landed on ethereum i think it's just i the majority of my collection is on ethereum uh it's easy it's you know it's very well known and it's pretty solid so we decided to go with that cool very cool uh it's interesting to hear the the different thought processes that go that go into choosing the, the the blockchain that you use. And and so thanks for sharing that with us, everyone. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I think it would be interesting. Um, you know, it's always interesting to hear what Toco platform offers. And uh, Nutella, though, I do have a question for you. When, when you hear the, 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 the three guests talking about their, their thought processes and their choices, um, what do you think in relation to Toco platform? Does that start brewing thoughts in your mind or, or, or not? Yeah, definitely. I'm always open to learning about people's wants, needs, requirements, and trying to uh, inform the decisions we make at Toco to make it a you know more usable, easier to use, more feature rich platform uh, for any token and NFT projects that are out there. I think it's, you know, I'm, I've always said it. I'm, a big fan of a multi-chain ecosystem. I don't think there's going to be one that kind of rules them all. Just, And the analogy I use is there's not one business that kind of does everything. There's big monopolies or oligopolies out there that do a lot of stuff. But I think uh, I think in the blockchain space, it's a it's going to end up a multi-chain ecosystem and, and people should have the right to, to use multiple platforms and, and make decisions and make informed decisions and educated decisions on which one suits whatever they're trying to achieve uh, the best or, um, you know, fulfills those requirements. So it's always something that uh, I'm personally learning and trying to to bring back into the Tockle ecosystem. We're still very young. Uh, we, we do have features out there that others don't. We, we're lacking in features that others do. So there's always uh, room for improvement. And uh, it's definitely something that I take on board. And, and you know, Tockle Talk is a great, a great place to uh, get those thought processes and understand how projects work. Indeed, indeed, and we're always glad to have different guests on to share their journeys and to share their experiences, what 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 they've learned. And so, in this case, we have Proton Planets, we we have Space Cadets, we have Rex Credit NFT, and the people behind those. So, we are going to be rounding out our discussion now. I'm sure there is so much more we could continue talking about, but we do have a time constraint and. I do want to thank you, Hayden, from Proton Planets, for being here today. Thank you very much. I'm really happy I could be a part and, um, you know, have a great discussion with all six of you. Wonderful. Yes. And, of course, don't go anywhere. We're not quite done just yet. Titan 6, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. All, anytime. It's our pleasure. And Rex, Credit, NFT, Avi, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. I hope we, our listeners have learned uh, at least a little bit, uh, an introductory amount about uh, renewable energy credits. Thanks to you. And of course, um, you know, Nutella Lika, thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks as always. And Kelsey, thank you too. 
And thank you for hosting. Wonderful. Okay, well, I guess we're going to just go around, unless there's any other final thoughts. Um, in fact, even if there are, you can share it now as I go around the, the, the table one more time. Hayden, where can we find out more about Proton Planets and what's, where's the best place to follow you? So um, we're on Twitter and we also have our own website. So protonplanets.com, otherwise our Twitter, just Proton Planets. You can find everything there. Uh, updates, news, and uh, future developments and everything going on for us. So, um, yeah, it'd be great if anyone wants to join um, our community. Thank you very much. And how about Titan 6? Where can we find out more about Space Cadets and yourself as well? Yeah, so I would most definitely uh, start with Twitter. That's always a good place to be. Uh, Space Cadets NFT. Uh, our Discord is really where a lot of our community collaborates, so you know, feel free to hop in there. Um, and I would say those are the two greatest places to reach us. Perfect. And Thank of course, so it's uh, Titan underscore uh, six underscore. If you want to shoot me a follow. Right on. Well done. Thank you. And how about Avi? Where can we find out more about Rex Credit NFT and what you're doing? Absolutely. So uh, you can follow us on Twitter. That's Rex, R-E-X, Credit NFT. Um, you can same handle for all our social media, or you can go to RexCreditNFT.io for our website. And there, you know, we have a social media uh, section that has all of our links. Excellent. Well, we are going to get a quick bit of news from Nutella Lika about Toco Platform. Nutella, how, how do, how's it going? Why don't you give us some of that news, please? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yep. And uh, for the people that are interested in the NFT giveaway, if you check out our Twitter, keep your eyes peeled on that. Uh, you'll see that over the last couple of days, we've uh, we've posted a bunch about that from the previous uh, Toggle Talks that we've done. Uh, the other ones, other pieces of news is that we've launched the Toggle blog. So if you haven't seen that, I'll drop a link in our Discord. Um, our developer, Lenny, has written a blog about IPFS and trying to understand that and how that plays a role in the NFT space, so uh, go and have a read. And then the other one is that the Time Lock DAP implementation will be released this week, and we'll be making the earlier adopter Time Lock reward uh, transaction. So if you need to refresh yourself on that, I'll drop the link to the Medium article uh, in the chat as well. But that's all I've got. Excellent. Well, of course, we also want to thank Dream Tim and Cax in the background doing their thing, helping to make this stream happen. And of course, now it is time to say goodbye. Please do stay tuned for the next Tokal Talk. It will feature Kriha.io, Reinventing Supply Chain Collaboration, and CyberNights of Driven Ecosystem. 10,000 unique CyberNight NFTs to protect the crypto realm. That's on the 3rd of May, so keep an eye out for the announcements and the further details. Also, follow our Twitter, download the show on Podchaser, and join Tokal Discord if you haven't already. Give us a like and an honest review wherever you're listening. If you want to be a guest on a future episode, submit the guest request form on tokal.io slash tokaltalk. Once again, thanks everyone for listening. Thank you to Hayden from Proton Planets, Titan6 from Space Cadets, and Avi from Rex Credit NFT. Of course, the rest of, from the rest of the Tokal team. Ami Giuliano, goodbye. Until next time.